That's it. And then you just cut it off. And that's the flay. And then you just squeeze this in here. And that releases it. And that is the flay. I remember my dad cutting a stone for to build the church wall and I was down with him a few days when I was only a small boy when he was building it. I remember that very well but I was only very small and been only six or seven year old at the time. That's a long time ago. But he built that wall all around the church, cut the stone and built the wall. It's a lovely wall like it's some unusual well built wall, I'd say. Many one room access. Anything to do with body work was done in this workshop. We built horse carts from the wheels to the last bit of the body work. All was done in this shop at one time. This is a machine I made for cutting steel. It was a very successful and very useful machine. And done an awful lot of work over the years. Pat was out at the, the river. river and the, the, along the river there was big stone trays with stones built up for the walls and didn't the hook get caught in the net wire on the far side of the river do you see she was pulling it and it, it come out and it's like an, an, a jam in his lip. A double hook. <laughs> so we had to leave and he come out and there was a woman, a, a neighbour living along the river, God mercy on her anyway, but she seen him covered with blood and she come down and she brought him out to the road to see could we get a lift up a lodge. Now I hadn't arrived at the time, but who come along only McIntyre? The boy that owns the carpet place and talked, she stopped him anyway, so he's only seen Pat anyway, but she says there's a doctor up the road, she said, but he'll soon be going off, he goes off at such a time. So Pat got into the car with McIntyre and he turned him back up to the doctor and the doctor says, I can do nothing with that, he says, you'll have to go to Castle Bar Hospital. <laughs> Pat says, I'm not going to Castle Bar Hospital. I'll go back to the river. And your man says, uh, McIntyre says to the doctor, you haven't a pair of players or anything? And he hadn't. So McIntyre says, I have a pair. And he went out to the car and he come in with these players. And he, he says to pair the doctor... A pair of base grips and a hike saw, that's what he come in with. A pair of base grips and a hike saw. And says the doctor to him, he says, that's no good to me. But if it's not, he says, I have a different one. You have to come in again. Why your cutters? Why your cutters? That's right, what he come up. <laughs> and he cut the, the hook anyway and got it out anyway. And they gave him a tetanus injection. And the nurse wouldn't let him go home then for half an hour. And so McIntyre couldn't wait that long. He was fidgety and everything like that. And he'd say to the nurse every few minutes, that's a strong man, he's all right. There may not be a hit wrong with him. But in 20 minutes' time, anyway, she says, she, she let him go, anyway, so. I can tell you, got out and been there, and out through the door, and when he, before he shut the outside door, he turned round, he says to the nurse, if he dies, I'll throw him back into you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I met my wife 
on a visit to my uncle, and my uncle was my the whole aunt. And I got a bit of a chatter of that day, and we arranged to go to a dance the following Sunday night, which we went to a dance in Cuthill. And our partnership lasted about two years until she went away to Scotland to be a nurse. And then we had no contact for two or three years, and she finally came back on holidays, but she, she, uh, wrote me a letter before she was coming back to tell you she was coming back and she'd like to meet me. So I met her and I went to a dance when she was home and I went out with her for the couple of weeks she was on holidays. And finally she went back and done another year. And then she come back at the end of that year and we had another week or two together. And we finally got engaged before she finally went back to England. But she went back and she only stayed another year and she came home and that was it. She stayed with me. From, we got engaged and she never went back. And we got married in 1952 and we're living here since for 55 years. I built this house and we had to wait till I got the money and the time to build it before we could move into it. But we got it done eventually and we're here since and we had three girls and five boys in our life together and they're all very well and very happy and all doing well thank god they're all great and very healthy so something to be thankful for And my wife was seriously ill for the last three or four months in and out of hospital every week or two and finally she got worse and worse and died recently. And it was a big blow to us all then because she was a great woman and we miss her at terror. At least when you go fishing you can try and forget for a while which you can't do sitting here in a chair in the house on your own. You just can't forget. But when you get out fishing, you can forget about it for a wee while. And, uh, you know, I think it helps quite a bit. It's just the fact that you're, you know, doing something that you're interested in, it will lift your mind from your troubles, at least for a while. Even in the fishing, having the same activity to fish rivers is a hard when I had the power of the two hands. But thank God I'm not so bad. I can still fish a bit, but not as, to the same extent as I used to. And getting in there the boats is a bit awkward too, because you really need your two hands, which I haven't got. Oh God, I have great friends, no problem. There's always somebody come on and to help me to get in and help me out. Never stuck. Never stuck. Thank God. My own family. No, don't live too far away. No better friends than my own family. <laughs> 